What's up, everybody? This is Chris Nichols, and you're listening to an episode of the Nichols and Dimes Show featuring Taiha Sloan. Enjoy. What is up, Taiha? I'm just happy to be here. Me too. My goodness, we just had a hell of a situation trying to set this up. <laughs> I forgot two of the critical little pieces in uh, my microphone arm, so we had to spend about 45 minutes or an hour <laughs> just figuring out how I'm going to set these microphones up. So thank you for your help in yeah. going through these early stage type entrepreneurship journeys. Oh yeah, it is just beautiful to be with the mess that is being an entrepreneur and embracing the challenges, the sounds, the yeah. The crazy setup where we try to look professional and it's it's just so much more authentic and real to yeah. like what this whole whole experience is like. It's so true, and and I I just appreciate you. You know, I I could easily be embarrassed and say, "Damn it, you know, I don't have everything I need. Let's try another day." And and you know, just hearing your attitude of, "Oh, let's make it work." It's like, all right, this is the whole purpose of what I'm doing this show about, right? Mm. I'm getting I'm getting. Uh, people on the show who are up and coming entrepreneurs who are uh, going through these these kind of rough spots and figuring things out as you go. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just such a real life example of what I'm trying to uh, share the stories that we're we're portraying on this show. Mm -hmm. But anyway, guys, I just uh, funny little start there for us. But we are rolling, and it sounds like we're in good shape. Uh, I want to introduce you to my friend Taiha. Uh, Taiha Sloan, she is a healing and breathwork coach through her brand Embodied Alignment, which she started in 2020. It's amazing how many businesses we're seeing that started in 2020, <laughs> quite the year. Uh, and we'll get into more about what that means since it's such a unique version of life coaching. But Taiha is from Honolulu, Hawaii, went to Santa Clara University in NorCal, two things that we both have in common and now is based out of Encinitas, California. Mm -hmm. Taiha, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, thank you so much for asking. I feel really honored and just really excited to share about the shit show that is this journey, <laughs> but the, you know, I wouldn't trade any second for anything else because it is truly the biggest avenue to personal growth and development and connection to yourself and spirituality and all of that stuff. So thank you for having me. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure and I'm, I'm stoked to get into all that stuff. It's uh, and there's quite a community of with with that t topic of focus, I think, in San Diego, which which is cool. And we'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. um, but but just fun facts here. I think uh, so. You went to Punahou. I went to Iolani. We grew up in Hawaii. But that's not actually how we know each other. It, you actually were in my sister's class at Punahou, I think, right? Really? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, at Allie Nichols. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so oh. it's a small world. But I really got to know you in college at Santa Clara. Uh-huh. Um, because all the Hawaii people kind of found each other, right? Uh-huh. As they do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that was quite the quite the fun time at Santa Clara. So why don't we just start there? What what did you do after college and, and what was your what were your steps to get you to San Diego and why did you come here? Mm -hmm. It is wild reflecting on all the little pieces and all the little um, breadcrumbs that I was I feel like I was given to land myself here right now four years later. Um, I guess we graduated. I graduated in 2017. So it's been six years now, but I studied mechanical engineering in school. So very different uh, field than what I do now. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that because I was you know, into math and science and I thought I would get paid well and it would look really good, right? Mm -hmm. I get to be smart and you know, have that kind of, um, uh, people would see that part of me. Yeah. And I wanted to be seen that way. And did you know that coming out of high school that that was the direction you wanted to go? Yeah, it, mm -hmm. my parents always were like, are you sure? <laughs> because they they knew more of what I couldn't see myself yet because I was choosing that as a way to like, you know, I discovered this later on, but I realized that I was doing something for my ego rather than truly what I mm. was into. Yeah. Um, 
and especially being a woman you know in that field doing really well it sure. like really boosted my ego yeah. mm-hmm. and so um i did that for a year after college and i had a, a really cool job as a a propulsion engineer at a company that built satellites wow. so I got to actually live out part of my dream because I always wanted to be an astronaut when I was young and really I was able to launch a satellite like in the mission control center in the middle of the night for two weeks um, that was the highlight of that job but Whoa. the rest of it was like sitting at my cubicle writing technical documents and i was uh-huh. like this is not it got it and, um, and that so this was in the bay area right mm-hmm, in palo alto okay yeah. yep yeah was, did this have to do was this separate from the nasa uh, the they have like some sort of station up there right um we had yeah nasa Ames, i think okay i i can't fully remember but we worked with we worked with SpaceX, um, and nice. we built these huge, like, 15-year satellites, um, which I got to work on the uh, propulsion system uh-huh. for. So it was one of the coolest jobs you could have as an engineer. Yeah. But I still couldn't stand it. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Besides that, that one um, mission control time. Um, and so that was really telling for me. Mm. And I, I realized, like, First of all, growing up in Hawaii, I'm very connected to nature, very much mm-hmm. needing to spend time with my feet in the earth and yep. stuff like that. And I would get out hiking like once a month in San Jose. Like there wasn't very yeah. much going yeah. on. She, she, she might be on to something with why the two of us ended up in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So it was actually, I went on a um, 10 day trip in Alaska with my family. We were driving around in an RV and the vast openness of Alaska it was mm. like trees and just spaciousness and uh, mountains and glaciers and I was like oh my god <laughs> I need this in my life yeah. I need to be next to nature again and I landed back in my cubicle after that and I was like no I'm not gonna keep doing this I'm not going to subscribe to this life because I think I have to and other people think, you know, they Mm. have to. I'm just not. Um, And that was when I decided, like, I don't care. I'm going to do something that's better than this. Uh And at the time, I was really into fitness and I was just like, I'm going to try to become a personal trainer and just see where that goes. And it was really terrifying. Yeah, huge turnaround. Yeah, because... I would literally be starting from scratch yeah. and um, there's so many different pieces that like got me through that journey, um, including back injuries that led me into understanding more of the physical body and healing and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a huge, huge moment where I just decided that I'm not going to do this because I think I have to. That's a choice for me to think that I have to not be happy eight hours plus every single day um and i don't want to do that anymore Hmm. wow so would you if you could point to one thing that really made you realize you're just over over the engineering path was it that trip to alaska or, or were there other things that spoke to you leading up to that that made you realize that yeah um i would say overall i've been a very introspective like reflective um doing all the things that i can to express my gratitude for life and all of that Mm. and i think it was when i just over and over again was doing all the things that i could to squeeze in those little moments of like feeling good and all of that throughout my day to day but it was like wake up squeeze in five minutes of meditation, five minutes of journaling, go to work, drive through rush hour traffic, count down the seconds till I'm done, come back home, have a little bit of time for working out, eating dinner, and then go to bed. And I'm like, this is not, I just don't see how I could do this for the rest of my Mm. life. I will literally suffocate and die. And this was your first job out of college, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering because I think a lot of kids who graduate college and they go into like a, a corporate job that's somewhat demanding at least normal hours uh it's a shock to a, a lot of people right regardless of what the job is and then people kind of figure it out in maybe a couple of years right but i'm wondering if it was more so just that like the routine 
uh, and, and kind of the lifestyle as a shock? Or was it perhaps maybe uh, people who you worked with? Like, did you have much of a community that was your age, for example? Or was it people who were just living completely different lives? Because uh, I imagine in the field of work you were doing, uh, the, the age demographics were probably all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good question. Um, I had it really good mm-hmm. for a, uh, an engineering field and, and environment. I had people who were my age. I had people who were like nerdy but really cool. Yeah. And we'd go on snowboarding trips and everything. So I was really, really lucky in that department. And so how I actually felt just told me. Like I just knew in my soul that I was, being, I was pushing myself into this tiny little box that... I thought I had to be in Mm. order to be happy, in order to be successful, in Mm. order to be stable. And I just had these moments after moment of like, the only person in control of this is me and I can choose differently. And I, I, I don't want to say that this journey is for everybody because a lot of people it's not, and they are really happy in a corporate job and maybe they have one that's really well balanced and really supportive you know there's so much uh, i don't want to demonize that world at all Mm -hmm. i just think for some people it doesn't work and Mm -hmm. you will i think some people it can work and some people it they just subscribe to it because you know it's what we've been taught it's it's normal it's safe Safe, yeah Mm -hmm. but for me i just knew that I had that that was another thing I knew that I had the discipline to do what it would take to be successful with whatever I did Mm. I learned that from wrestling huge that's huge what she just said is huge right there because and and that's why people who are successful entrepreneurs who looks like they're at the top um, I think a, a lot of these people have that confidence that if they lost everything they would be okay they would figure it out because they've they know they can handle that and I think that aligns with what Taha was just describing. But but you mentioned wrestling. Tell me about that. What's your background in wrestling? Mm-hmm. Um, it was my entire life in high school. I was very intense. Yep, okay. I was the opposite of what I am now. Um, <laughs> and it's wild to reflect on that. But similarly to how now I teach that, you know, our biggest traumas or our biggest pain gives us our biggest gifts, mm-hmm. um, wrestling Though it was, you know, a time in my life where I had a lot of issues going on, mental health issues, mm-hmm. um, it taught me so many lessons. One being, I will do whatever it takes right now to get to where I want to go, even if it means immediate pain for delayed gratification, which mm-hmm. is a skill that most of us in the society don't have or Mm. we don't embrace that immediate pain we're scared of it because we don't want to feel it but comfort yeah right Mm -hmm. and um so being able to do what's hard now for that delayed reward is is one thing i'm using every single day Mm. wow yeah okay so so you wrestled in high school Mm -hmm. and did you think about competing in college at all yeah um Mm. I was offered a lot of opportunity, but I didn't want to because they were like Kentucky or South Dakota or Oklahoma. And um, guys wrestling is a lot better in in college than um, than girls wrestling. Uh So I just I had gone through some injuries like I talked about um, a big, big um, push into spirituality and personal development were my injuries and chronic oh. pain. Mm. So I just didn't want to continue with such an t- intense sport that was um, not, yeah, not supporting my body in yeah. the ways that I thought was important. Mm, got it. Okay. Wow. So, so when you talk about I, this, is all important leading up to your business today. So I, I want to make sure we talk about these things, but. You know, you talk. You mentioned something very interesting, right? You said I was the exact opposite of who I am today, mm-hmm. right? right? You're, you're into wrestling, wrestling. You're intense. I mean, yeah, obviously today, anyone who you know who follows Tai Ha on social media at least and sees what she's up to is very enlightening. It's probably a good way to describe it. She she seems very at peace and and chill and calm and and just you know uh, smooth with how uh, with her delivery, right? right. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as opposed, opposed to 
she, seemingly she says back in high school, it was the opposite. What, what about the in, in between part when I met you, right? College time, Santa Clara, did you have any of that, even, uh, that I guess, uh, development of be, becoming more to who you are? more who you are today during college or did this all really just start happening after you kind of put the engineering aside after that job uh, stint after college? Mm -hmm. College was one of my, uh, I wouldn't say darkest times, but I was definitely still in a lot of my shit. Like I real quick description of what happened was experienced a lot of mental health issues in high school through um, dieting for wrestling, yeah. developing eating disorders, body dysmorphia, mm. being so attached to my physical body as this is who I am, this is my worth. Yeah. If I'm not this fit and this skinny, I don't worth, I'm not worth anything. Mm. Nobody's going to love me kind of thing. And got into like in the in the darkest times freshman year of college when i started drinking post wrestling sure. um i was throwing up after every meal for a few months uh, and is that on purpose yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. just like i i gained 20 plus pounds in a matter of months mm -hmm. being 100 pounds that's 20 percent of my body yeah, weight you know well, mm -hmm. and just not knowing how i was going to get out of that and that was the darkest time of that moment but since then um or of that like of that specific food and body journey mm -hmm. but from then it's been like this spiraling of you know on our personal development journeys it is not linear we are constantly having to relearn and fall down and get back up and relearn and take a step forward take a step back and that's kind of what it's felt like um with my relationship with my body and food and um, loving myself. Mm -hmm. And so I was working through all of that through college. I got into a relationship that kind of band-aided it all because I was getting this love from this person. Mm -hmm. And then when we broke up, I spiraled my senior mm -hmm. year. I binge drank. I um, was really disrespectful to my own body in terms of with being with guys. Mm -hmm. um, I was binge eating again. I gained 20 pounds again. So it's like that whole time I was learning, but mm -hmm. it was a constantly revisiting the, the original wounds that I was just band-aiding over and mm -hmm. over again. Yeah. And so finally through um, getting my foot in the door with these back injuries and having to address physical healing, like healing my physical body. Yeah. Um, and then that, and that was actually the, the culmination of events that the, the perfection of how everything came together, where I was in engineering, I made that decision to leave and do personal training at the same time I was going through these crazy back injuries from over-exercising and trying to not gain weight, right? Mm. All these things just working together. Um, I finally found this corrective exercise company on Instagram mm. that I took a risk to just join, paid mm -hmm. $600, never invested money like that in myself, yeah. and joined it. And right away fell in love with it so deeply, fell in love with helping others learn what I was learning yeah. and just spent all my time in the community helping people rather than doing my mechanical wow. engineering job. And within a month of going on that Alaska trip, they offered me a job. And that job landed me in Carlsbad, in Encinitas. Wow. So that, and I have not left. Oh, wow. So this happened during the Alaska trip? trip? This was in 2018. Uh -huh. I had been working for a year. Okay. I was like, fuck this, yeah. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. At that same time, I was working through this back injury and realizing I can't keep beating my body down in the gym. Mm -hmm. This is unsustainable. I keep hurting myself. I'm yeah. in constant pain. Like, no. Found this corrective exercise startup, joined their program. First time I ever invested in myself and like, felt that intuitive like I have to do this kind of mm -hmm. thing even though $600 makes no sense to me <laughs> and um, I, in a matter of months I had dove so deep into helping people with mindset and physical movement in that company 
in that community that they offered me a job. I was their seventh employee. Wow. Within a month, I moved all my life down here. Wow. And I've been here ever since. And that was like my door in with healing, wow. right? Physical body. Wow. And then I was led to learning more about the mindset and I did the landmark curriculum, which is just a, a personal development seminar, mm -hmm. very fo focused on like mindset work. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went down a rabbit hole of like, okay, there's more types of healing. And I've now just have this really well-rounded approach of like physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. It's all really important for us to address if we want to feel the best we can in our lives. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. <laughs> that that brings a lot of this together to make sense mm -hmm. so okay so now i understand why you're so passionate about healing in all these forms that you just mentioned because you have had to heal from so many different types of pain yourself whether it was physical emotional mental and i can relate to all that you know i've had my journeys in all those areas as well mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned back injury i had i had a serious back injury i still deal with it today what, what was your back injury mm. Um, I never got it checked out mm -hmm. with a doctor because both my, my boyfriend as well and this company, mm -hmm. um, my boyfriend does similar, similar corrective exercise work. They both taught me that, you know, what happens when you go to the doctor and you figure out what, what your injury is, mm -hmm. you then identify with, I have this injury and uh. this is who I am. And this is something so, so, so important to realize for anything in life Yeah, is when we choose to identify ourselves as something and we get attached to our pain, mm -hmm. it is much harder to heal it. Yes. Yes. So I, I never actually got it fixed or uh, checked out by somebody. Um, I chose to continue like looking at myself and exploring my own body and that company helped me in a lot of ways. Um, but it didn't actually help me with the second time I got a back injury in the same place, but a different injury. And that's what started showing me that first of all, sit your ass down, stop trying to do so much all the time. I was doing jujitsu, lifting mm. super heavy, mm. surfing, skating all the time. Yeah because I had this part of me that just needed to be doing as much as I could yeah. all the time, oh, yeah. filling my time, couldn't sit with myself. So this was like in that time where I was still in the very much go, 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 mm -hmm. right before I got more into like the emotional and spiritual aspects of healing, which I'm so grateful for being led to in another divine, beautifully orchestrated um, giving of a breadcrumb from my soul. Mm -hmm. um, I was led to this life coaching program that I did in 2020, which mm -hmm. is what helped me start my business. Mm. And I got to do through all of COVID and everything that helped me see that I had unprocessed emotion in my body that had been there for so long that it very likely like got so dense that it turned into physical pain. And mm. I've found this happens very frequently where Things that we deal with, chronic diseases, right? Disease is when we have an autoimmune or insomnia or chronic physical pain or um, depression, anxiety. These are all very commonly mm -hmm. linked to not knowing how to process your emotions and feel and actually release them from your body because we've been taught that it's not okay to feel your emotions. Yeah. And when you don't feel them, they get stuck. Mm. And so with the second back injury in the same spot in my body, I'm like, okay, this physical work isn't working. What else can I do for it? Yeah. Right? Mental um, mindset work. And then starting to learn to feel my emotions again, starting to treat my body with the love and respect it desired, mm -hmm. slowing down. That helped me move through that in a much more holistic and effective way of healing in mm. my opinion. Wow. That's a lot of good stuff right there. <laughs> wow, Taha. Okay, yeah, I, and I just I have to call out the the big thing that I resonate with with everything you just said. The the pattern I'm seeing in your journey is there there tends to be this linkage of identity and who you are with with something, mm -hmm. whether it's the way your body looks, whether it's your your sports or your 
athletic performance in some way, whether it's your, your job and the perception that comes with that career path. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've struggled with the exact same thing or, or an injury. Mm -hmm. I've struggled with the exact same thing in each one of those categories, right. Whether it was water polo and, and if that's not going well, then it's like, who, who am I? Right. Uh, no, you're, it's like, no, I'm, I'm Chris Nichols, not Chris Nichols, a water polo player. And you're <laughs> taught, right. Same thing for you, of course. And, and that was like what you went all in on, mm -hmm. uh, is maximizing that, that message of, no, I'm Ty House Sloan. Mm -hmm. And then these are other things that I like to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I would even challenge it to go one step further mm -hmm. and like even release the identity of I am Ty House Sloan. Wow. And just be okay. like, I just am. I'm not even the person that I was born into being. Like I I personally believe that we we exist before we come into this world uh -huh. and then we will continue existing after. And so I'm on this journey to continue remembering that infinite eternal essence of myself rather than re being identified with Taiha and all of the emotion and thought and beliefs and you know pain that yeah. I can get so identified with I'm like learning to rest as this greater awareness of mm -hmm. like I'm just watching Taiha go through this weird thing that she's going through wow. you know and yeah. you know the freedom that comes with that because if you take a moment and you just shift from being like you over there and me over here mm -hmm. and you just kind of float above us and you like watch this is happening chris is over there yeah. i'm over here mm -hmm. right we are the awareness of ourselves mm -hmm. all the time we are not our thoughts emotions or any of the other things that happen and with that space everything else is less like everything's less intense less mm. painful less um grabby right it's like we can just watch the cosmic comedy yeah. that all of this is. I like that cosmic comedy. <laughs> yeah. And it's a much more fun way to live. And, yeah. and it's not easy to when we've gone through a lot of trauma and pain that makes us feel really like intensely, right? If we have intense emotions or intense thought patterns that mm -hmm. like, right, react to life in certain ways, then it's going to be harder. And that's why this work that I do with... Um, helping people release their trapped emotions and heal their trauma it helps them reach that place of awareness mm -hmm. in in a much uh, more graceful and easy way got it and that's a great transition point because i do want to ask specifically about your business mm -hmm. today right mm -hmm. so you mentioned you got the start you were doing the corrective exercise work and then you uh, got into all forms of healing which then led you into into this life coaching program was was this like a training program for people who are uh wanting to become life coaches or was this like some did you work with a life coach and then you got inspired by hey i want to do this myself mm -hmm. uh okay. could you just tell us what that program was and then i want to talk about the um the genesis of embodied alignment totally yeah so the synchronicities and magic that i've been presented with since i left engineering that was like my first spiritual awakening right like mm -hmm. choosing i want something better than this mm -hmm. and then after that i was working as a personal trainer for a bit mm -hmm. before covid and um i knew it was like a medium job and i didn't know what i wanted to do next but i was like this is the big thing is i've never known what the heck i'm doing i'm just trying things that's yeah. so huge so many people don't try things yeah. because they don't know what their one thing is yet and I'm like, you never so do. True. You never figure that out <laughs> until maybe you're 60 years old. Yeah, or, so, or never. <laughs> right. So um, I've just been trying things. And I was like, okay, I like to help people, maybe life coaching. And so yeah. I started trying to manifest something that would help me become a life coach. And then I also was still going through my food and body stuff. So I was like, okay, I also want to find something, not necessarily the same things, but something that would help me with my food and body issues. Mm -hmm. Seven days after meditating on this stuff, I have this life coaching program fall into my lap that is a program that will help you heal your food and body issues and become a life coach. Wow. <laughs> was so it was, like, it, was, it was two in one. Right. Yeah. And and I've had a lot of like money stuff my whole life, like worked through a lot of scarcity mindset and all of that. Uh -huh. And again, 
six hundred dollars was the most I had really spent on myself from that first initial investment. Mm-hmm. This program was eleven thousand dollars. Holy smokes! And okay. I was like, I saw that number, and logically, there's like no, no way in hell. Mm. But I had this feeling in my heart that was like, you're doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I have to do this? Yeah. Um, I know exactly what you mean with that. And that's the voice that that you need to listen to. Right. And and so I was like, whoa, I have this knowing that I'm going to about to, I'm going to spend half of my savings on this program right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go all in. I'm going to pay in full. And my parents think I'm crazy. (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) But I'm just going to do it. First call. Well, this is another little but did side. They, I have a question about that. Yeah. Your parents part. So they thought you were crazy. Did they try to stop you? Were they freaking out about it? Or did they trust that you would figure it out? They didn't really try to stop me. But they definitely, because there are so many like scammers yeah. and people who are not authentic. Yeah. I'm really grateful that from the get-go, I've had a really clear inner compass that like can that's resonated with um, legit people. Sure. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, they were just trying to look out for me, but they didn't really have a say anyway, yeah, so they yeah, just yeah. kind of let that go. Fair enough, yeah. Um, but <laughs> once I paid for that, I was working out at my gym, uh, the gym that I train at, and I look over and I see the woman who's leading this life coaching program working out. And I'm like, I think that's Samantha Skelly. Yeah. And I have to, I I don't have to, but I'm like, oh my God, I think I have to go over to her. I go over to her, I say hi, and I'm like, oh my God, she works out at my gym. She lives in Encinitas. There's too many weird things happening right now. And the craziest part is she's my friend now, and we hang out, and we're in the same programs together as like, um, as people in the program. And it's just so beautiful what happens when you just trust these like nudges. Yeah. Because the first call in January of 2020, I just knew every single dollar worth it. Mm. First call of a 10 month program, I already knew. It was like this feeling of this person gets me, these people get me, they're on the same mission, and this is what I've been looking for. This is why everything I've done I've done so far hasn't fully clicked in yet. Mm. And so from then on, I just, you know, continued learning and trying these you know practices of feeling my body letting myself feel my emotions learning about the protectors in my body that don't let me feel my emotions Mm -hmm. befriending them including all parts of myself and then i ended up starting the business at the end of that year and never going back to personal development i mean personal training personal training yeah. yeah wow okay and so you ended this like in 2019 or right before 2019 I ended, so I got furloughed from my, <laughs> can I tell one more story? Yeah, it's so wild to think about. It's funny. You forget about these magical moments. I so I invested that money, right? Half my savings gone was like trying to be so smart about money from then on, knowing it was all worth it, but worked from January to March of 2020 as a personal trainer, got furloughed, oh, wow. furloughed as um, COVID happened. Sure. And then I got to stay home for six months or more and got paid by um, unemployment okay. more than triple the money back, not having to work. <laughs> After I trusted myself and invested that money, wow. I got paid to work on myself at home, do my course, and more. <laughs> This is what happens when wow. you trust that you're, you know, you deserve to feel good. You deserve to follow your soul's passion. Yeah. I've seen it over and over again that magic just happens because you're choosing that you get to live a life that feels magical and that you you're obsessed with. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean my gosh, I, I I'm sure the 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 unemployment situation during COVID was kind of all over the place, but given your story, it's it's almost like you you had a you were deserving of it from a divine way, right? Because yeah. of how it worked out, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm glad I'm glad that happened to you, and yeah. it allowed you to to figure this out and get to this point because that that's such a rocky journey, trying to get something new started. Of course, especially yeah. after starting personal training for just a few months, right? Yeah. And then COVID, my God, I mean, and I've talked to other people 
who have very similar stories with where they just started something a few months before COVID and then they just get wrecked, right? And then they have to figure out how to survive. And mm -hmm. then they have, it's a story for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So when you got going with Embodied Alignment, how did you come up with what services you want to provide? And, and could you explain what those are specifically? Yeah. So when I first completed that life coaching program, I... Um, was still, I've lived most of my life in my head as most people in the society. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so I was still doing like one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. I got some one-on-one -on -one clients and I was doing mostly like conversational, like mm -hmm. chatting with them and yeah. helping them work through their beliefs and, and their traumas and all of that. Practicing some of the somatic works, meaning um, being in your body and feeling your emotions. But you can only take somebody as deep as you've gone yourself. And I hadn't gone that deep with it yet. 10 months was a lot, but this is a lifelong journey and mm. healing your trauma, your childhood trauma. We, we have so much more in there than we even know. Um, so that's what I started with. And then I started running um, group programs because I was called more to doing that mm -hmm. and develop some um, educational content that I would give them and meditations and journal prompts and everything and then we'd meet once a week um, which was really beautiful and so that's kind of what I've been doing more so and I've been expanding into like creating six-week breathwork series now where nice. I do like a focus on helping you learn how to love yourself I'm in the process of um, launching one for healing through heartbreak because mm -hmm. I went through three breakups in the past four years that mm -hmm. really like woke me up yeah. really quickly um, and helped me deepen my embodiment of everything I've been learning. So I was doing one-on-one. -on -one. Now I do a lot of group work and different types of programs, hopefully to be able to be as accessible to people wherever they're at in their journey. Uh -huh. um, and doing one-on-one -on -one again and I just launched a breathwork membership where you can just pay a monthly subscription and have access to two breathwork calls um, nice. and stuff like that. So it's been really cool to um, follow those nudges that I've learned how to trust and like, mm -hmm. this is coming through. I want to do this. This excites me. And I just literally next day put it out there. And wow. um, that's not the way everybody works, right. but... For me, being the way that I am, I just know when I know. And then uh -huh. the, the sooner I take action, the sooner everything that I need to know about it like comes through me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been pretty cool to like release the needing to have it all figured out before yeah. doing it. Because I've, I've been able to f feel mostly like what it is, is a connection to the universe. Yes. Um, that... I just know that anything I need will come through at the right time. And so whenever it does, I just deliver. Yeah, you're much more in touch with your inner divine voice, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, and, and people have different words. I call it God, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's... And, and I know that voice and, and it takes practice to, to hear it. Totally. And, you know, and sometimes you question yourself like, wow, this sounds crazy, but this is coming from that place again. Yeah, it's, it's a struggle to grapple with that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when you, I just had a thought and it's escaping me, That's but okay. when you, um, uh, yeah, anyway, it, it, I'll, I'll think of it, but it, it sounds like you've really developed that muscle, that skill, which is amazing. And that's why you feel so much more comfortable to just put something out the next day when you think of it. I'm like, okay, I know this voice so well. I can trust it and mm -hmm. I can put it out publicly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think another thing is through this journey, I have gotten really good at just trusting that I'm going to mess up a lot and a lot of things are going to flop yeah. and that's okay. Like I don't, I'm just doing it to see what lands. And then if it doesn't, like I get to look at maybe why didn't that land, uh -huh. you know, and, and that's how I learn. I learn the most through just doing and seeing what needs to be adjusted afterwards mm -hmm. rather than kind of paralyzing myself and not doing because I just know, like I said in the beginning around what I learned from wrestling, I will just do it. Mm -hmm. And then even if it's scary, so that I can get the lessons because I think that's the quickest way we learn. Mm. Yeah, I like that. 
So tell me, do you have an aspect of what you do that's focused on women or is it completely focused on women? Um, I had one group program that I led women in. In my last group program, I had one guy. Um, it's not really focused on women. Okay. It tends to be more of what I attract, but okay. I'm not super... I think this is really important for men to get as well sure especially being taught like you know don't don't cry right boys Mm -hmm. don't cry like things like that um i think the more men are comfortable with their emotions Mm -hmm. the better they'll treat women the better the whole world will be it's a good point um Mm -hmm. and so yeah i hope to help all humans yeah i love it Wow. Amazing. So, okay. So you got the, the breath work programs, you got a healing programs and these healing programs, you mentioned the breakup example. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any other specific types of healing programs or, or are they kind of more customized as you go? Yeah. Yeah. So my main one right now is a three month group healing and awakening program. So Mm -hmm. I focus on helping them heal their childhood, heal their trauma, reconnect with their body, reconnect with their emotions. And therefore, when all of that shit is cleared out from their energetic field, they can feel their inner voice more. They can reconnect with their intuition. They can feel more supported by the universe and Mm -hmm. um, find whatever that higher power for them is and feel that higher power within them and around them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that program is called Quantum Soul. Quantum Soul, okay. mm -hmm, um, it's a really, really beautiful, accelerated journey that, yeah. I mean, the things that my clients experienced in this first round of it, I used to have a six month program, yeah. but I wanted to make it as accessible for people as, as much, um, you know, committing to something for six months is a lot. Yeah. Three months might be easier mm-hmm. and more affordable and see how much transformation I could get them in a half the amount of time. Uh-huh. Um, or like that I could support them in getting for themselves. And it was just beautiful to see how fast they had these insane breakthroughs. Mm. And it was just also a reflection of like, you know, who I've become and the space I can hold and the safety I can provide for them, um, over the past several years. So giving a lot of validation on both sides. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So that's my main program right now that I plan, hope to, run three times a year. Um, How long is it? Three months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the main one for that. And then one-on-one mentorship is more of like um, personalized, um, less educational. I work in like the energy field. So usually we'll just be presented with stuff and then I'll guide them into their bodies Uh and we'll work with the energy. A lot of it is like non-conceptual. Sure. You can't use words for it. Yeah. Um, But it's really cool to feel this like force Mm -hmm. universe god that's moving everything and trying to help your body heal naturally yeah but a lot of the times it's our minds that get in the way so i guide them out of their minds into their bodies Mm. and then teach them how to do that themselves as well yeah so true and so i worked with a life coach once uh actually i'll connect you guys he he lives in pb good friend of mine named frankie he's on the show as well But uh, I did a a program with them in early 2022. It was called a Dream Builder program where it was a three-month thing. And it was really focused on me designing and visualizing my dream life Mm. uh, in each category of life. And I learned so much through that, right? Because the cool thing about that is so many people, uh, they think they might know what they want, like ultimately, but they can't can't articulate it, Right. right? Uh, and then you realize, wait, I really got to dig into this and know exactly what I want. And, right. and then, you know, you you work each step to make it more realistic. But the biggest thing that I took away from that experience, and, and I think this is probably an important message you probably want to communicate to anyone who might be interested in working with you. But it's it's that life coaching is different from therapy. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I took away was life coaching is, is a, your guide. Mm-hmm. your guide to to helping the person navigate through themselves to be who they want to be who they're supposed to be as opposed to somebody who comes to you and and lets out everything and then you know gets therapy from it right mm-hmm. there's a big difference mm-hmm. right yeah yeah this is a big um thing that i'm talking about right now 
especially because so many people have there's so many good therapists and then there's so many therapists that are not helping I don't even want to say it in that way I would say yeah. people aren't getting what they want from therapy uh, and yeah. mm. and so like one of my mentors shared with me the way she looks at it is like coaching is focused on helping you get from point A to point B Mm -hmm. and in therapy there might be less of a focus on that transformation Mm -hmm. there can just be kind of that venting talking experience and for me I don't think that that's a good use of my time Mm -hmm. to just talk about my issues because what I've learned is talking is a mental thing and emotions and trauma are a embodied experience yeah and you can't actually think about them thinking about them causes them to get stuck mm. you have to learn how to relax your mind yeah. and get back into your physical ability to sense with your feeling sense your emotions in your body mm. so for example learning how to feel sadness in your chest yeah without making it this oh no i shouldn't be sad oh i got to do something to change my sadness right all of that kind of thing yeah um so for me in the work i do why i kind of lean more towards like um somatic healing mentor is what i call myself now yeah okay because i basically help help you transform your life by transforming the energy in your body Mm. By finding those pieces of bound energy in your body from your past experiences, trapped emotion, freeing that up so that you have more of an ability to connect and feel your natural state, which is happy, which is all these feelings of this beautiful place that we want to get to, Mm. right? That fulfillment and magic and bliss and joy, it's who we always are yeah. and this energy is just blocking us so that's what that's what to me like i don't even super resonate with the word life coach anymore sure um you've turned into your own thing yeah yeah, yeah. and it's it's really cool how all of it goes together and how every piece, like I did therapy for my eating disorders. Sure. It helped a little, okay. but it didn't get me there. Mm. Then I got into the mindset work and life coaching stuff that helped me. And then it's just been a deepening and deepening. Yeah. So it's really cool to just, you know, feel into your own body and like, what am I called to right now? What do I think I need right now? And then just following it mm. and then seeing where you're led because like I said, the magic that can happen through that. Yeah. Nicely said. Wow. Well, gosh, we, we've been we've really gone down um, <laughs> so many interesting paths just with, with the philosophy around this and, and what you do. It's it's so interesting. And I, mean, I do have a couple more uh, fun questions I, I want to ask you here. But so we, we've recently started 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of people seem to have a very different feeling about this year. Yeah. And I don't mean to say that in a cliche way. I think a lot of people struggled in 2022 Mm -hmm. in some serious ways, Mm -hmm. right? It was just kind of a a year of, of transition of, of adjustment after the past couple of years we had before that, uh, the world is kind of in shambles in, in a number of ways. Um, are you able to articulate your biggest highlight of the year and Mm -hmm. then your biggest Mm -hmm. challenge? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's been a lot. Yeah. Um, I'll go with the challenge first one biggest challenge personal and then business was in 2021 actually i went through a really challenging breakup that um was it 20 yeah it was 2021 Mm -hmm. that opened me up to so much of my uh, attachment like issues and codependency and all of that sure um we we talked talked about all that yeah. yeah, yeah and that like would that broke me open to myself mm. hence my program name breaking open yeah um i sat and i felt through all the pain that was not just from that relationship but all the pain that i drank away from past breakups all my childhood pain mm-hmm. i let because i now had this capacity to feel this i let myself feel it all through a whole year including the first half of last year um And as painful as it was, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because it helped me 
constantly, continuously come back home to myself, my truth, know that I have me forever now and that's all that I'll really need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And from that place, what comes to you when you don't need it, mm-hmm. but you know you can have it yeah. is the most beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And that led me to meeting my new partner mm-hmm. who is constantly surprising me with how he is everything that I've ever mm-hmm. wanted in yeah. a human at this point in my life. Mm-hmm. And down to the littlest things of like, we both love listening to movie soundtracks over (laughs) all else. Yeah, Um, I remember hearing that in one of your uh, Instagram posts. Yeah, Yeah. like we're just so aligned. He he's everything that I've ever wanted, and um, to 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 be rewarded with this beautiful gift of like this is who you've become. Mm. So you get to have you know your perfect match. Through that pain, Mm -hmm. it's like. Pain is our biggest avenue to everything that we've ever wanted. Yeah. It lets us like strip away all that's not serving us. So as challenging as these few years have been in many ways, I have embraced every single moment of it. Mm. I have constantly over and over again looked at why is this happening for me? Yeah. What what is this like how could this be a blessing? Uh-huh. Right? And and that is a choice, I think, to embrace pain in that way mm-hmm. so that we can move through life circumstances, which are not always going to be fun, right. with the most ease and grace mm. and in such an empowered way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then in business, Justin also helped me um, realize this pattern, which maybe you can relate to, of mm. like, I would try because I have this really good... Um, doer and yeah. like, I can work really hard sure. mm-hmm. I'd work really 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 hard for a few weeks maybe a month and then not get the result I think I wanted mm-hmm. and then collapse yeah. and give up yep. and especially being in this like spiritual world mm-hmm. I'm gonna just sit and meditate and let God do it for me you know yeah. I'm gonna attract it yep. and I just realized with his help like I keep letting this disbelief in myself and therefore um letting my results dictate how i felt and how Mm. i was showing up affect me and that's going to delay my progress in my business so much more so i just decided you know i'm gonna show up to my fullest every single moment that i can Mm -hmm. no matter what Mm -hmm. i'm not giving up on myself anymore i'm not giving up on this business i know that i have this magic this medicine to give Mm -hmm. to the world yeah even if i don't always see it i know it's there Mm. and that was a really cool um shift in myself to just decide because so many people will go through that right of like letting that collapse happen and then a lot of the times just giving up and starting a business and then it fails right yeah and it's really just i think the only thing that is different between people who fail and people who have successful businesses is they don't they just don't stop trying Mm -hmm. you know they don't give up yep so and and one of the questions i i'm asking everyone is in uh what's an entrepreneurial life hack that you think uh that you have that's against the mainstream belief Mm -hmm. uh i call that out because it you might have just answered it with what you just said Mm -hmm. would you or, or would you have a different answer for that um when I was reading your questions, I had one that might be, you know, that one's really important. Uh-huh. But what I would say that is really important for this specific journey is to learn how to process your emotions very effectively. Mm-hmm. Because I am crying all the time. Yeah. And so many things will poke at every single emotional wound, unworthiness, mm-hmm. scarcity, lack, all of those things yeah. all the time. And if you don't know how to use those emotions and use that pain to heal yourself, right? It's like these emotions are pointing us back to like these feelings and beliefs that we already have about ourselves. Mm. The business isn't making us feel this way. Yeah. We already feel this way yeah. and the business is pointing at it. Got it. So I, I use the challenges and the emotions and the pain in my business to feel it, heal it, connect with myself. Yeah. Notice what was there. Understand, of course, you'd feel that way. Of Mm -hmm. course, this is challenging. Of course, of course, of course. And what do I need to give myself to fuel and resource my true essence, Mm -hmm. the power, the confidence, the trust more and more every day? 
and then, you know, spend five seconds or five minutes less stuck in an emotion and mm. a thought pattern and a loop than I would have last time. Nice. I think the more often you can do that, the the quicker this will be because I, tr- I truly believe that our business is just reflecting back to us who we are. Yeah. And the more that we work on ourselves, then the more successful the business will be. I love it. Yep. Just redirecting within you, you know, the, the circumstances almost don't matter. It's all about how you are using it to, to guide yourself, direct, redirect yourself. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, Ty, uh, thanks for explaining all this stuff. This has been amazing. Um, I, I have a, a final question that I'm asking everybody here, mm-hmm. uh, which is given the type of profile I'm looking for on this show, I'm looking for people who are up and coming entrepreneurs and I'm trying to expand the network uh, to continue to grow the show and meet more interesting people uh, through this journey. Uh, do you have anyone in mind who would be a great person I should invite and bring onto the show? Yep, you met him earlier. <laughs> My boyfriend, Justin. Okay, all he right. He is such an incredible person. He um, has started two businesses now and has been through his own journey and trials and tribulations with that. Uh-huh. But he is a really, really incredible heart-led, soul-led, helping so many people um, understand why they've been in physical pain from a more movement-based um, um, uh, approach. And it's so cool how what I teach and coach on in you know, mental, emotional, and spiritual mm-hmm. development, he has the same kind of outlook, but yeah. at the physical body and how it moves. So mm. um, I think he'd be a great fit. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. It would give me a good reason to come back up to Encinitas. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Cool. Well, Ty, huh? please uh, tell everybody, uh, how, how can they find you on social media, online? Uh, where, where can they learn about you and, and get to know you? Mm-hmm. So my Instagram, and I'm newly on TikTok, and okay. that's more so what I'm doing now. Um, but both of those are Taiha Sloan, just T-H-A-I-H-A-S-L-O-A-N. Um, uh-huh. And then my website is embodied-alignment.com. Yeah. Perfect. And we'll link those links uh, when I release the episode. Awesome. Taya, so good seeing you again. It's been too long. And thank you for doing this with me. This has been really fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was so great. Awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for joining our conversation today on the Nickels and Dimes show. Please check out and follow my podcast, Instagram at Nichols and Dimes Show. I'd love to have you subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find it on my website. I welcome and encourage any feedback you can share in the reviews so I can continue to improve and develop the show. Thanks again and see you next time.